Good afternoon, everyone. This is another one of my informal videos, and we have a friend here today that's going to talk about kind of what's going on in, in her uh, area. She is the chair of social science, the social science department, Nicole Tre Trevina. Trevina, did I say that right, Nicole? Okay. Trevina, yep. Trevina. Um, Nicole's going to talk to us about uh, what's going on in the division, maybe about some of the uh, some of what she's doing in her classes uh, that she's had to convert to a virtual format, maybe what some of her faculty that she works with are doing in their classes. And I think we're going to talk a little bit about some of the extracurricular activities that are happening as it relates to the social science division, uh, psychology research day and things like that. So Nicole, let us know kind of what's going on in the art that, that division. Thanks for having me. Um, so a, a big part of what we've been working on is kind of figuring out our place with either synchronous or asynchronous classes. And so some of our faculty have chosen to tackle that. Um, I myself, I do just one class a week via Zoom so that students have that option. And then um, the other time that we would have met, I'm doing a Zoom where I'm open, but I'm not necessarily providing instruction other than for them to kind of log on and, and check in about things. And they really have utilized that a lot, whether it's about assignments we're doing or, or projects or, or just checking in. So. so Nicole, just real quick on that, because that's come up quite a bit when I talk to interview faculty. The so the um, student affairs folks code our courses as a web course and when they do that uh, they normally see that as asynchronous but I think given this unique situation where we had to convert on the fly to a virtual format we already had the time set um, same thing for the summer coming up we've got the schedule in place so I believe some of the faculty are going to continue to offer at least some Zoom opportunities during those times that are already scheduled. Not necessarily all faculty, some might switch to an asynchronous. Is that kind of what's happening in your division? Yeah, yeah, we've got several that are very excited about it and others felt like maybe it was too um, much of a time struggle to get those students logged in if they have various jobs that make it difficult for them. Um, but that's why I think it's good that we have that variety where some faculty are choosing to do those synchronous opportunities where they can actually have that dialogue with their students. And I, I think students really appreciate it, at least in my experience, they re really seem to like that opportunity. Great. So do you wanna talk about um, some of the specific things that um, you're doing in your class or you wanna uh, talk about some of the, whatever you wanna talk about. It's your time, <laughs> sure. Nicole. Sure. Like I said, we um, for me, I'm doing the Zoom once a week during a regular class period, and we do kind of a regular class where we have discussion and um, uh, lecture a little bit just to get them prompted on topics, and then also direction on various assignments and projects that they're doing. And then I've also done some Kaltura videos to help them out. Like when we had a test last week, I did a couple of those to help them prep for the material that was going to be on the test that I didn't have time to cover in the Zoom session. And what do you teach? Um, what are your two classes that you're teaching? Right now I have social psychology and interpersonal relations. So that interpersonal relations is the one that's gone from being face-to-face -to, -face to an online. And what's your favorite uh, content area in interpersonal relations? Uh, communication. I feel like we don't get a lot of discussion in, in regular classes on that and I think that that is a vital component to navigating the working world and relationships in general and so giving them that opportunity to build on those skills I think is a really neat time. So if you had to give me one tip where I can improve in communication uh, what would that tip be? Or not me personally but just I don't want to put you on the spot too much. <laughs> Um, in general, I think so. people struggle with recognizing how important nonverbals and other aspects of communication that are not verbal are coming out. So anything from what we call paralanguage to, uh, which is kind of the volume and pitch and that sort of thing, to nonverbals, to where you place the emphasis in language, that's actually figured to be about 90% of the message mm -hmm. rather than the actual words that you're saying. And I think people really doubt how much of a role that plays and, and sometimes that's a hindrance I, to them. I think that's why I, you know, I'm hearing people talk about how exhausted they are at the end of the day when they spend most of the day trying to do Zoom all day and you can feel it in your brain. You can feel things are missing 
and you see why didn't they get that? I don't understand. I just said that, but they didn't get it. And sometimes I'll find myself repeating myself ten times, but if I was in person, maybe not at all. Um, right. I think that's fascinating, um, and I I do think it's extremely important. Um, why I've heard the comment, well, are we just now all going to be doing things virtually? I think if anything, this experience is going to highlight the importance of that uh, personal. Uh, connection and um, it, I just think it's magnifying it um, kind of the opposite of what I've, I've been hearing some people worried about it I don't see it I think it might be a supplement but anyway I don't want to steal your time so okay. please continue I, I think I think you're right I think a lot of the students actually um, they told me that they were really disappointed to see the transition I, they obviously understood the need but um, several of my face-to-face -face students uh, voiced some apprehension to that and that the switch and that was kind of my big push to do at least one zoom a week i know it's hard for them when they're working and things like that um but most of them have that built-in time and i've had pretty good in um, attendance at those sessions so i think i think that speaks to that that wanting that connection could you tell us about some of the extra curricular activities um i know you talked earlier before we started the interview about uh, the Psychology Research Day. Could you tell us about some of those type of activities and why they're so important? Yes, um, so we had planned on doing Psychology Sociology Research Day. Um, actually, it was supposed to be last week, and um, we wanted to still provide that opportunity to students. It, it has looked in the past a lot like a science fair. Students, you know, bring their poster board and they talk about what they've done. Obviously, that's not an option right now, and so we have extended the opportunity for them to either record themselves, you know, with a cell phone or what have you, doing that presentation or um, record audio and, and put it with a PowerPoint and submit that. And then those are going to be archived until we can get together on campus again and do a full judge, um, judging you, and, and assessment. Do you have some examples of the type of projects, uh, specific examples of some of the things that the students, uh, type of research they engage in, in on a day like that? Well, they're typically coming from our intro to psych classes or intro to social classes, and it, it's various things. In the past, we had funneled it to either neuropsych or social psych topics, but mm -hmm. yeah, this year we had opted to keep it wide open. Mm -hmm. So we've seen a variety of, of different topics. Um, I know that several of the students like to explore different therapeutic methods and techniques mm -hmm. and how effective those can be. And um, I know we have one faculty member in particular who's very interested in pet therapy. And so she encourages students to do something with that. I'm sure people oh, wow. have seen the, the dogs that come to campus during finals week. That's, that's her and our, our psych social club working to get that set up. You did a presentation. Um, weren't you part of that presentation? Okay. I, was. That's, mm -hmm. I think that might have been the last time I uh, saw you in person. Um, that's really, um, really exciting. I'm glad. So we're going to continue that in kind of a virtual way. Is that correct? Yes, yes, they're um, supposed to be sending those to me. We encourage the faculty to give them some extra credit if they went above and beyond with that extra step. And then um, hopefully we can do a regular presentation day when we get back to, to normal. Well, I have a question for you. I've been telling folks, um, I, get, I got this question, I've been doing webinars. And the question is, how do we stay well? Um, what's the best way to stay well during this time? Uh, if you're working out of your house in a different environment and um, well from a psychological and physical standpoint and one of the things i told them and you can tell me if i was if i was off base um I, is i said to them that um you know do not see your day as eight to five as you would in your normal work environment because many of our our employees have children and and lots of other responsibilities. It's just to kind of see it more based on task. And you try to accomplish those tasks throughout the day, but you might have an hour with your kids and then two and a half hours of work and then 30 minutes over here. So I also told them to try to take um, as many micro breaks, standing up, walking outside. But I also said, if you've got a hobby, um, you know, in, on the weekends, and really this is the good time to turn off, you know, turn off things a little bit um, in terms of thinking about COVID as much as you possibly can. And, and I also told them if you are feeling a bit isolated, because it is, I think you would agree with me, a, a counselor would never say to someone who's feeling isolated or alone, or depressed, 
anxious. They would never say, I tell you what, here's what I recommend. Social distance, isolate, um, stay 10 feet and you come near someone. They would never say that. Am I, is that fair? Yes, definitely. And in, in a, my, my past role was as a counselor and no, this would be the opposite of what I would tell people. So it is a struggle. What else did you have? Um, we'll be wrapping it up pretty quick here. What else do you have, uh, Nicole, for us? Um, well, it's interesting that you brought that up. So the Psych Social Club, which um, I'm a co-advisor for, uh, myself and the club president met with Calica Jansen, the head of our counseling program this morning, and did an interview that we recorded via Zoom um, to kind of give some students some self-care techniques and also just a reminder about the services that are available to them. And so just kind of maintaining that psych social club rule, they're going to next week um, continue in a recording that we had planned to do in person um, with Voices of Hope. And we're bringing in someone with a counseling background and psych background and someone with a sociology background. And they're gonna talk with them about how they use their degrees. Um, and, and so still continuing with those opportunities for students and just in a, in a different format. So that's been kind of a neat way to utilize Zoom and still make, make those connections with the students. That's wonderful. And I believe that program uh, offers free counseling to our students. And at the same time, we're helping train students from, I think, Nebraska Westland as well as University of Nebraska Lincoln. Is that, mm -hmm. I, is that correct? Yeah, and I think, I think they and also Dome? Uh, Dome. Yep. Yeah, Dome. Dome mm -hmm. as well. Um, so we would, would encourage our, I think that's continuing through kind of telecounseling. Um, is that correct? Yeah, they're just using Zoom like the rest of us. It's HIPAA compliant, so that's, oh, that's an excellent option. So as a, what, what's your background, uh, Nicole, uh, in terms of your uh, formal education training? Um, I actually did my counseling degree at Doan, and then okay. um, uh, I also have a master's in sociology. Okay, wonderful. Well, we really appreciate you um, joining us this uh, afternoon, and thank you for all you do for the college. And it sounds like you guys got some wonderful things going on in the social science department. Any last minute advice for any of us? I, I think that self-care that you mentioned earlier is so important. Um, and I, I know you're a runner. I think that exercise is important, that time outside. You know, we took my daughter out yesterday and we played in the snow. It was just a, a neat opportunity instead of seeing it as a negative, like, you know, why do we have snow in, in April? Right. Well, it's fun. Go, go play and go get out of it, in it. Yeah, Enjoy. I think that one of the things, too, um, is, like I said earlier, if you have a hobby, I like to do woodworking in addition to running, and, um, you know, as often as I can on the weekends, if I can have time, especially during this time, I think it's um, kind of a nice stress reliever. I think it's good for folks to do that. And I also think it's good to, you know, Try to use humor during this time. Try to, you know, watch a funny movie or, um, you know, I have this thing I do uh, every weekend. I make little wraps uh, for my various uh, kids. They're not really kids anymore. They range from 22. It started when my daughter was in uh, middle school or eighth grade. She was going through a struggling time and I would make these little wraps on how to get along with your colleagues at school. And she got a following and for the whole year I had to make those wraps. And then I picked them back up a couple of years ago and I sent them out on the weekends, to try to give inspirational messages, but with a lot of humor in them. Really yeah. Well, thanks for joining us and everyone uh, say goodbye, Nicole, to the college and you guys all have a great rest of your day. Take care. Thanks, thanks for having me. Thank you.